Logic can take you from A to B, but imagination can take you from A to infinity. Well, it's not me who said this, it was Albert Einstein. And in today's video, I also have someone very special from a big biotech and pharma company also saying something similar for AI and non-AI companies in biotech and pharma. Now, before we jump to the topic of the video, let's talk about logic. Logically, what do you think? Who will win the IPL? Logically, who do you think will win India or Pakistan? Logically, what do you think the future would be like? Full of pollution and humans going to Mars, right? Logic can take you from A to B, but imagination, like, did you imagine ever that you will sit in a car with a stranger and go to your destination? It's happening today thanks to internet. Did you think that you will ever meet me and I'll ever meet you? It was all illogical a few years ago, but today I know you, you know me, right? That's where today when I talk about AI, Jarvis, you up? For you, sir, or what? Many non-AI critics say that it won't happen, it may not happen, right? The truth is, even the chief information technology officer of a big biotech and pharma company, his name is uh, Mr. Rao, uh, for the full name is Diogo Rao. The opportunity, I really think, is to actually capture a lot of that human intuition and build that into our models. And I think uh, the way that we separate the signal to the noise is by actually encoding a lot of that thinking. And he's from Eli Lilly. You know, Eli Lilly is one of the largest pharmaceutical company in the world. And he was talking to Vikas Dandekar of uh, ET, you know, Economic Times. I'm sure most of you don't get time to read Economic Times. So this article came last uh, Saturday or Sunday, and this is a complete elaborate interview. I'll put the link in the description as well for you to read. So he has been asked only five questions and the answers to that those five questions are real eye-opener so let me quickly talk about what exactly he said the entire summary of this article is by 2050 non-ai companies won't exist but that's mr rao saying i will rather say that by 2030 those companies will cease to exist they will start vanishing and most companies will adopt AI. And that is why the demand for AI in biotech and pharma is going to shoot up. And even before the colleges start a degree, you know, there will be a demand. And if you are ready, you can take this opportunity and become a you know, uh, scientist, a well-renowned scientist in this area. Now let's come back to the fact what exactly was asked to him. Is AI really aiding in drug discovery research in the pharmaceutical industry? He went beyond logic. He told what's happening right now and uh, by 2050 what's going to happen. He clearly says that I firmly believe that companies and institutions that don't invest in AI won't be around by 2050. In fact, drug development, which used to take years to gather earlier and up to $14 billion annually, now that is being reduced and the investment for the future is happening today with long-term bets in AI by Eli Lilly and various other pharmaceutical and biotech companies. Now, we actually thought that AI, uh, or rather I would say that uh, non-AI companies would still exist. But given that these biotech and pharma companies are now aggressively investing in AI, we know that uh, in a few years from today, traditional biotech companies will no longer exist. Now, he he's further asked that, okay, um, how exactly do you see uh, protein design getting impacted by AI? And he goes ahead and says that, Today, if you want to design an image, you go to ChatGPT and type and it gives you a beautiful image, right? But what if tomorrow you want to design a particular protein which has a XYZ impact on the body, you first design the protein using Google AlphaFold and then reverse engineer it and go ahead and design the DNA sequence because DNA sequence only leads to the protein, right? DNA to RNA to protein. So we first create the protein using computers and then reverse engineer it to get the genetic code and then synthesize that genetic code in lab and then go ahead and synthesize that protein in, inside the body. So that is where we are going to look at protein designing at scale using technology and uh, moving forward we will see a lot of protein engineering, protein design companies coming into picture. Now having said that, now today uh, and the next question which was asked to him is what exactly is lacking in the AI companies? Now, this particular uh, uh, you know, question has a lot of opportunities for all of you. So you all should hear it very, very carefully. He says that all the AI data sets which is available today, okay, all the machine learning data sets which is available today for patient data or disease data, that's all positive data sets, okay? We don't have negative data sets. Like, uh, 
why did a drug fail? Do we have that data? Most of the companies don't have that data. So when we are training an AI uh, engine for drug discovery and we only feed the positive data, the AI engine might fail. But if we teach the AI engine both sides, the negative data set which lead to uh, a failure in drug discovery and the positive data set which led to a success in, uh, in under drug discovery, if the AI has both, it can actually dis you know design better drugs. Now, don't you think this is an opportunity? Yes, because the positive data sets are there, the negative data sets don't exist. And that is where clinical research will boom because data sets will be brought in from there and those will be implemented in this AI engine. And that will create a platform. Uh, many biotech and pharma companies will create such platforms. In fact, Biotechnica's CRO arm is also creating such platform for drug discovery pipelines so that you want to design a drug or you want to repurpose a drug, you want to find uh, a new drug, Yes, use the pipeline, you have all the data sets and you get the replies. Now having said that, imagine the world where today if you need a pizza, it can get delivered in 30 minutes, but if you need an onco therapy, it takes probably 30 months. Why to wait for 30 months? What if we could deliver an onco therapy in 30 minutes? Now that's where logic doesn't take us, but imagination does. Thanks to AI, thanks to computing, and thanks to all of us and our efforts, we can actually make it happen. That's what he mentions there. Now the last question which was asked to him is why does he hire lazy engineers or will he still prefer hiring lazy engineers and he says that I feel that the lazy people will always find a better way of doing things in lesser effort right and that's exactly what is the need of the hour today as biotechnologists you you are thinking that I'll go to the lab work in a molecular biology setup and do hard work and I'll get results well boss that will take 14 months to uh, you know probably um, 14 years to get one drug molecule but what if you could design all of that in four days and um, probably in the next 30 days you can have the drug printed in your lab so actually what we can do is for example, any scientist gets 60,000 work hours in the lab, okay? Now in that 60,000 work hours in his entire lifetime, either he can design one drug or he can design 1,000 drugs. If I say you can design 1,000 drugs, that's where imagination type takes you and that's where AI will take you. So my take on this news and this interview is industries are going to perish if they do not start learning AI and the best way they will do that is by hiring AI engineers and that's what we are going to do we are going to train you on data science now what is data science it has got three parts the first part is coding the second part is bioinformatics and the third part is AI ML. so we'll train you on all these three in three months time and then we'll give you industry oriented projects which Biotechnica CRO has got from other clients and then you can of course uh, after taking permission from the clients so then you can work on real world projects industrial projects and then you can explore better results for your career and of course for these companies who are going to hire. So like uh, the Chief Information Technology Officer of Eli Lilly, uh, Mr. Dog Diogo Rao says that if we have to succeed, we have to perform or we'll have to perish, right? So tell me what you want to do. Do you want to perform and or perish? I'm sure you will say, I want to perform, I want to achieve. And if you want to become an achiever of tomorrow, then our data science course is starting from 29th of this month okay to 9th of may onwards there'll be a three months training first we'll train, train you on coding python java perl all that and then we'll go to the next where we'll be talking about bioinformatics we'll train you on all the bioinformatics tools techniques which are used globally open source as well as closed source and then we'll move on to train you on ai ml so that you can design algorithms to defeat diseases and if you want to know which all projects you can work on at biotechnica with the help of our cro arm you can check all of that down in the description and before you click and before i leave i want to remind you this is the era of ai the sooner you pick the trend the richer you can get so do not delay register today for our data science course and we'll make you ai ready we'll make you ready for the future of biotech and pharma companies because you are the future of biotech and pharma companies thank you keep shining take care bye bye